This plant is called Wiriyagan in the language of the Gadigal, the traditional owners and custodians of this site. It's also known as the Old Man Banksia and its botanic name is Banksia serrata. At the moment it has these cones of flowers. So this is not a one individual flower, but it's actually hundreds if not thousands of flowers arranged on a woody axis. These ones are closed at the moment, but if you look higher up into the tree, there's some where the flowers have started to open from the bottom up. Now it's named after Joseph Banks, so the genus name is Banksia. And Daniel Salander and Joseph Banks, who visited Australia in 1770, this is one of four Banksias that was collected at Botany Bay and taken back to England. It's a striking plant and a very common plant around Sydney, but its range extends from southern Queensland down to the bottom of Victoria, and there's even some occurrences in northern Tasmania and Phillip Island. It's characterized by a really twisted, gnarly trunk with thick, almost bubbly bark. The flowers attract a whole range of different animals. It seems like from recent studies, the flowers mostly start opening at night and they attract a whole range of mammals who help with pollination. And these include things like sugar gliders, eastern pygmy possums, and here in the Botanic Gardens, we also see ringtail possums on them. A range of different birds also visit them. So honey eaters, wattle birds, of course, noisy miners. And then as the flowers, start to mature into their seed bearing cones. We also see sulphur crested cockatoos, but in many parts of Australia, the yellow tailed black cockatoos also use their strong beaks to break into those emerging seed bearing structures. Not only larger animals are attracted to Banksia serrata, but also insects. So you see lots of native bees, European honeybees foraging for nectar and for pollen. And the plant is also one of the hosts of the Banksia jewel beetle. Now as the flowers finish, they're quite persistent. So you see these persistent styles all over the woody structure that holds the flowers. So they're often covered in these hairy flowers that have finished. But as the flowers mature into fruit, you see they make these round structures that hold the seed. So the type of fruit is called a woody follicle and the seed is held inside that woody structure. These plants are really well adapted to dealing with fire. So at the base of the trunk, they have dormant buds that sprout from something called a lignotuber, depending on the intensity of the fire. They also have buds inside that gnarly trunk called epicormic buds, which can also reshoot after a fire. And this all depends on the intensity of the fire. So different intensity of fire, different strategy for reshooting after fire. But also these woody follicles, they help protect the seed. The seeds released during heat events and particularly during fire, and then the seeds are able to germinate after those fires. Stories of this plant many of us grew up with because they were popularized by May Gibbs in a series of books from about 1916. And of course, the big bad Banksia men, they were modeled on those persistent flowers of Banksia serrata. So, Banksia serrata or waragon, you'll see it in many parts of the Botanic Gardens here in Sydney, but you'll also see stacks of them out in bushland.